Well, Ulysses, we try to do it every week. It's one of our most enjoyable episodes to do because we get to hear from you. Mailbag episode. It's one of our favorite things to do. We have a couple questions that are very interesting. So let's get started right now. You are Locked On Rays, your daily Tampa Bay Rays podcast. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Hello, my name is Kevin Weiss. I'm Ulysses Sombrano. And we are the host of the Locked On Rays podcast, part of the Locked On Podcast Network. Thank you for making us your very first listen every day. Be sure to check out and subscribe to our YouTube channel at Locked On Rays. You can also find us on X and Instagram at Locked On Rays and email us anytime, LockedOnRays at gmail.com. We have some mailbag questions to discuss, plus an update on the 2024 Locked On Rays Fantasy Baseball League. We'll have all of that, so let's not waste any more time here. Uh, This first mailbag question from John, obviously a burner on the X machine. Question here, what veteran pitcher and or hitter would you like the Rays to bring in? My answer is Zach Granke, he says. Great option, John. Obviously a burner. You have a great um, Twitter handle. I like that. Um, Yeah, Zach, Orlando guy, veteran, been there, done that. And I feel like I've seen on, on, on social media that this might be like a hot take. I don't think it's a hot take at all to say Zach Granke is a Hall of Famer. Oh, no, he should be a Hall of Famer, 77 and a half career war, Cy Young winner, six-time All-Star, six-time Gold Glove, and just the backstory and what he had to overcome with anxiety. I mean, there is, uh, there might be a movie there, frankly. <laughs> yeah, 100%. And, like, who he is, too, like, that just adds to the folklore yeah. of Zach Greinke. And Yeah, just look up, just Google, you know, oh. funny Zach Greinke stories and some of the, I don't know if awkward is the right word, but intriguing interesting unique interactions with players coaches media fans and so on peculiar yes that man is peculiar uh great in a good way in In a a good way way. in a lovable way yes Uh, i mean calling his own uh pitches in the 2020 season like what so everybody can know what he's throwing just because you know there were the whole houston astros thing was happening and he's like i'm not i'm i'm you know, I'm not, yeah. I wasn't there, but all right, here, I'm going to yeah. throw a curveball. Right. Uh, <laughs> and and beyond all what he does on the mound, like also one of the better, more impressive hitting pitchers that you'll yeah. find. Yeah. Like he probably, I mean, depending on if he worked at it enough or whatever the situation, he could have maybe matriculated into a two-way player at one point. Maybe, maybe. I mean, kind of pitchers when he was still going, there were good hitting pitchers. Uh, yeah. Carlos Zambrano, Zach Greinke, I believe. Oh, gosh, what was his name? He had like six, seven home runs in one season. Owens, Chris Owens, I think. Micah uh, Owens, maybe. Micah Owens. Uh, then Mike Hampton, I remember. Yeah, so there bit. there were a couple, you know, there were, there were a few guys. But yeah, I, going back to like if he would be a good – a fit i think so and from one of the many stories that are out there from zach he will tell you the truth he is not one for oh like let me sugarcoat it now so i think that would be very refreshing not because you know people sugarcoat there in, in the race clubhouse and like that's not, that's not what i'm saying but young guys just need to hear it and right. i feel like zach being in the room that would be a really cool thing I mean, the veteran leadership that that guy can just like bestow. Like if if we're talking Jacob Rizzi can do that. If we're talking about Zach Eflin can do that. Zach is <laughs> even way ahead in the in in the veteran uh, role than than those two guys. So, I mean, obviously, I, I would like that. Is it going to happen? 0.0% that it happens. Yeah. yeah, and I think they've got enough pitchers to play with for the time being. And then, I mean, just as a novelty aspect, 
it would be pretty neat to sign him, let him get his 3,000 strikeout yeah. swan song and, and move there. I mean, you had uh, the historic play with uh, Wade Boggs. So let's mm-hmm. let's do it with Zach Greinke here. I think that would be kind of fun. Now, as far as a bat, um, when you were mentioning telling it like it is, one of my first thoughts and inclinations was, Tommy Pham will do that. <laughs> yeah. So. And and I know we've we've talked about Tommy Fan since last season. We're like, oh, there's no veteran leadership in the in the, in the hitter side. Still, there there isn't really um, yeah. from from. I mean, Brandon Lau is now a veteran. My goodness, like time flies. You know, he right. he he got up in 2018. I, that that's that's now quite some time. So, is he the vocal leader that you want? Maybe, maybe not. It seems like to me that Brandon is kind of the. I'll let my work do the talking yeah. rather than my vocal cords, which For is sure. fine, which is fine. Mike Trout does that. Um, but yeah, it doesn't seem like there is that big hoorah, rah, Kevin Kiermeyer guy in the, in the clubhouse and yeah. Tommy fam. We never heard any bad stories from Tommy fam from the race clubhouse. After he left every, everybody was like, look, Blake Snell. Yeah. Blake Snell said it. Well, yeah, Blake Snell we made traded history fam with what he said. Yeah. For Renfro and a blank blank prospect. Yeah. Blake Snell, the two year sixty two million dollar man or whatever it is with the San Francisco uh, Giants. You don't, you don't say that unless the guy is really good. Not only yeah. on the field, but in the clubhouse. If he's bad in the clubhouse, yeah. you you don't bemoan that loss. And Blake Snell, by the way, I don't, I don't even think on that salary he'll be able to afford a studio apartment in San Francisco. Just saying, um, <laughs> prices are bad there. Uh, beyond Tommy Pham and Zach Granke, another name. Again, this is pie in the sky here, and because he doesn't have a position, that makes him more difficult as well. But he's still on the market. JD Martinez. He has yet to find a home. And my only guess, I don't know who he's represented by. My guess would be Boris, I guess. It is. I suppose. Okay. Well, that makes sense. Then probably holding out for a multi-year deal um, at the tender age of 36 years old. But uh, he's not playing like a 36-year-old based on what he did last season. 113 games, 33 homers, 271 batting average, plus, you know, I think 25 to 30 doubles. He has the AL East experience. And if you look at the metrics... He's hitting the ball as hard consistently as ever before. The The batted ball data is like monstrous. It's almost Aaron Judge-esque with what he's doing. Now, there are some concerns about the rising strikeout rate and getting older, how he is going to be able to stay healthy uh, and adjust to increasing velocity. And you get the the hamstring issues, the oblique issues, the the groin issues. You know, it when is his Nelson Cruz moment of he just doesn't quite have it anymore? Right. Is is that this time? And the market will dictate that. If 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 nobody's offering him two years, he might need to just go with the solo plus option, mutual yeah. option, player option, team option, whatever it is. Uh, but yeah, he's a Florida kid. Uh, there's been a lot of rumors with the Miami Marlins. Obviously, he's a Miami kid. So, uh, yeah. well, if, if it's not Miami, could it be Tampa? You know, that, that again, that type of right-handed power is... I I, I would really enjoy that. It's uh, envious. Let's say that. Yeah, I, I would really enjoy that. And the fact that he has played in the AL East, I, I love that fact. You know, he knows how to play at Fenway. He knows how to play at Yankee Stadium. And those two places, hello the rivalry might not be like it was when we were growing up in 03, right. 04, you know, but it still felt when those two teams uh, play each other in that stadium. So I would really like a guy that already knows that how to deal with that world series. I mean, that's yeah. just the pedigree. It, it speaks for itself. Now with Zach, with Tommy and with JD again, 0.0%. That it'll happen, but it would be fun. Right. And also this about JD, I also put some credence on being a World Series champion, going all the way and the the learning moments that you're able to glean from that. But it would be cool to see him beat up on his 
old stomping grounds, the Red Sox, and I'm sure he still has some bad blood for the Yankees. So that would bring a little bit more uh, fun in that respect. Uh, we have another mailbag question to get to, but first we have to tell you about prize picks. Did you know prize picks is the largest daily fantasy sports platform in North America? They are the easiest and most exciting way to play DFS. It's just you against the numbers. Instead of battling thousands and thousands of other players, including pros and sharks alike, you pick more than or less than on two to six player stat projections and watch all those wonderful winnings roll in. Uh, You should know this by now if you're a sports fan. Conference tournaments are here, which means the biggest moments in college basketball are getting closer. And you'll want to be a part of all the action on prize picks for both men's and women's college basketball, respectively. So go ahead, download the app today and use code locked on MLB for a first deposit match of up to $100. I'll repeat it again. Download the prize picks app today and use code locked on MLB L O C K E D. O N M L B for a first deposit match up to $100. Okay. This next mailbag question. So I'm trying to pull it up here on the X machine uh, comes from glue at big blue fan. Looks like a giants fan. In addition to being a race fan, I presume what's our long-term answer at shortstop. You said glue? G-L-U-E is what it says. Glue. glue. And then his at is Big Blue Fan. And yes, I'm looking at his profile now. He's a Rays and Giants fan. New York Giants fan. Oh, Uh, He he acknowledges, I know, weird combo, but we sports fans, we weird by nature. Direct (laughs) quote. Uh, Glue, you're not wrong. We are uh, weird nature, uh, weird creatures indeed if we like sports. Um, Thank you for writing to us well the the shorts up of the future boy i didn't think that we would need to have this conversation for another 10 years i thought we had this question i mean this time last year we could have said wander 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 for the next uh no this question wouldn't even have gotten and asked that's how sad this is i mean by the time that wander would be out of a raised uniform i'm hoping to have like not a teenager but an adolescent that's playing baseball you know Oh my God. Yeah. It's crazy. Yeah. You'd be in no. your forties by the time he's, uh, by the time that contract ends. Oof. That's Simply. gross. God. Yeah. I, I, yeah. Hopefully I get to 40. Um, Carson Williams. That's the guy. Okay. That's the guy. Now a lot of swing and miss with his bat, but he does have pop. He can develop into that pop a little bit more. The fielding, from what Klosky has seen, from what the highlights show, from what other scouts have said, from what Aram Layton, Aram Layton has said, it plays already. That glove could already be in the major leagues. So don't worry about if he can pick it. He can. He can throw it too. It's the bat. The bat, the bat, the bat. Now, I don't think if he... Question for you. I don't... Okay. Do you think if he were to go up this year, would he have a higher WRC plus than Taylor Walls? Uh, slightly or probably. I think he would or could. But I wouldn't necessarily want to risk that development profile to show that. I want to make sure, because he is still a very young kid. Yeah. I want to make sure he's fully comfortable with that transition to the bigs because there are as you mentioned, issues with the strikeout rate and adjusting to breaking balls. I mean, he's still relatively new novice to the game. Like he grew up as a a, a multiple sport dude that liked to surf. Like he has never been that ingrained in the game of baseball until now, which just um, exemplifies his, his athleticism and strength. Like scouting reports suggest that this could be a 30 home run guy. I think at, if he reaches his peak, his potential, he could be a shortstop version of Brandon Lau with better defense. But I'm talking about like power numbers, um, 
like what Brandon Lau puts up. You know, because uh, he's—I think he's only going to fill out more. Like he's all—he's pretty thin as it is, and he's already mashing baseballs. I am—I am going to say he—he he does look thin. Uh, I in Fan Fest, I was surprised though. I was like, you know, that usually happens. Like, oh, they're bigger in person. Duh. Yeah. Actually, the one person that I never thought that he was as big as I saw him in person, I was like, huh, that's weird. You're not bigger than what I thought you would be. Uh, Francisco Mejia. I was like, oh, wow. All right. I I would have thought bigger. Um, Carson Williams, way bigger. Way bigger in person. Yeah. Just like the the stature. But he's going to get filled out more because he's, what, 22 years old right now? He and- is uh, not even. Uh he completed he's not even 21 he's 20 years old in 268 <sighs> days as of this recording listed six feet one 180 pounds so he legally cannot have a drink right now that would be correct not for another 100 days or so wow that's crazy yeah as you're taking a drink of uh iced tea that is correct yeah it's a uh, lemonade uh, lemonade people yeah. uh yeah it's it's him now have we had a power hitting shortstop that might swing uh, and, and whiff a lot? Willie Adamas. Willie right. Adamas. And Willie Adamas is going to make money, and Willie Adamas has had a fine major league career so far. I think, would you sign up for a Willie Adamas without, without we go in there, without the I can hit at the trop thing? Like, if he just puts up similar splits, road and, uh, road and home, home and road, home and away. Would you sign up for that kind of stat line from Carson Williams? I would sign up for it, but, and I think that's impressive in and of itself, but it's a challenge for him and for a race fan knowing what you had and what you lost in Wander Franco. Because I feel like no matter, it's almost like you're taking a step backward. And it's no disrespect for Carson Williams, but Carson Williams will never be able to replicate the performance of what Wander Franco does on a baseball field. So I think, yeah. I hate to say it, but actually, I I think Carson will be fine. But maybe it takes that the guy that replaces the guy that replaced the guy to to really appreciate what um what that person's doing i i'm just getting the feeling that we may not appreciate what carson williams can or will be able to do just based on what wander franco did in that short period of time i hate to say that but i think no no no. there's something there i i love the train of thought but let me just give you a little sense of hope you said you need to be the guy that that replaces the guy that replaced the guy hey hello taylor walls hello jose caballero Rosario. Maybe we're seeing that little that that wheel turning at the shortstop position, so that when Carson comes up, our palate has yeah. been cleansed enough that we're yeah. like, "Oh, this is nice. I like this kid. He's better than the last three shortstops that we've seen in the last couple of years." Yeah, that could be it. And I'm glad you mentioned those guys because Caballero, as much as I think he's a good fill for right now, where the Rays are at. I don't necessarily see him as the long-term answer. Taylor Walls, we know our thoughts on that. Not necessarily the long-term answer. Not the long-term answer, I should say. So I think as of right now, it's got to be a battle between Carson Williams and if we want to go down the list, Braden Taylor. After that, um, there's not much there. And maybe the Rays, yeah, you know, they see what they have in the organization and they they make a blockbuster trade for that next shortstop of the future. That's, that's yet um, to be. That's yet to be uh, seen and determined. You know, I'm seeing Adamus's numbers right now. He has a 107 WRC plus uh, in his career. He has 118 bombs in a slash line of 247, 320, 439 for a 759 OPS. Yeah, I would <laughs> sign up. I would sign up for that right now for Carson Williams. A hundred percent. A 760 OPS guy that can really pick it. That means the guy is, he's going to be a lot of people's favorite player. Yeah. No, I'm, I'm with you there. And, and hopefully uh, he's able to keep his nose clean. And, I, and there's nothing that I've, I've read or heard. I mean, he seems like a really good down to earth kid that I think um, based on what, uh, 
is out there. Like he really has a, a thirst for the game and is constantly asking questions and wants to learn more and is really becoming uh, um, a baseball freak in that sense of, of yeah. wanting to, to do and, and take that extra mile to be the best that he can sort of in a, a Curtis Mead realm there. But yeah, I mean, it's, it's really, as of right now, Carson Williams are bust because if, if it's not Carson Williams, I don't necessarily see anybody else on the, on the roster prospects list that, that can live up to that billing. No, it's, and you know, you, you could play around with, oh, is Caminero going to be a shortstop? We've had that discussion before, yeah. but really it just looks like it's going to be Carson Williams. And if you haven't seen him play, guess what? Maybe you're a minor league uh, aficionado and you want to see some games. Why not use game time, people? You got to use game time because they are obsessed with finding ways to help you save money on tickets. Game time has deals on tickets right up to the start of the event. And even an hour after it starts, it's the best place to find last minute seals. In fact, you can find exclusive flash deals and sponsored deals on tickets for football, basketball, baseball, concerts, comedy, theater, you name it, they have it. So today, take the guesswork out of buying tickets with Game Time. Download the Game Time app, create an account, and use code LOCKED on for $20 off your first purchase. Terms apply. Again, create an account and redeem code L-O-C-K-E-D-O-N for $20 off. Download Game Time today. Last minute tickets, lowest price, guaranteed. That was a great comp you brought up about Willie Adamas because the offensive numbers could at potential look very similar to that where you're going to get between 20 to 30 home runs, hopefully closer to 25 to the 30 home run angle, 25 to 30 doubles, 220 to 250 or 60 batting average. You're going to have 165, 170 strikeouts mixed in there. But based on the scouting reports, the arm strength and the flashy defense, like, he could maybe win a couple gold gloves. So you're looking at Willie Adamas doesn't have one of those yet, but maybe Carson Williams could be that type of guy. Again, um, just like, just go with a few stats, a 107 WRC plus a 760 OPS that could have a gold yeah. glove or two. Yeah. 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 You signed up, you sign up for that any day of the week. And maybe, maybe people should be signing up for something else, Kevin. Yeah. And one more note, not to wax poetic on Willie Adamas, but being able to post to his level of not saying like he plays every day, like Marcus Simeon, but he, he'll give you 140 to 150 games when healthy. So being able to have that consistency and availability is also an important uh, stat there as well. Yeah. Uh, yes. Before we end this episode, we have to mention this. Um, a little bit down to the wire, but uh, I think we can get there. Yeah. 2024 Locked on Rays Fantasy Baseball League. Um, we need participants. We need 10 participants. And pay attention. Listen closely. In order to get the nod, in order to get the invite, for the 2024 Locked on Race Fantasy Baseball League, we need you to do a couple of things. You need to email us, LockedOnRays at gmail.com, a voice memo under 60 seconds, which is asking us a question or making a comment, something, some Rays-related mention. And within that 60-second or less voice memo, you need to say or introduce your name and where you're from. Ulysses, do you want to give an example of how this process should go? Hi, uh, I am an everydayer of Locked On Race. My name is Ulysses. I'm calling from Ybor City. My question is, will the Rays win more than 85 games? Love the show. Can't wait to hear you guys about it. They sure as hell better win more than 85 games. They better. If they don't win 85 games, that would really, really shock me. Even this with all the changes that are afoot yeah. with the roster um, and the difficulty of 
the uh, AL East. I mean, not to go too far into it, but I think it's going to be bookended by the Orioles at the top and the Red Sox at the bottom. And then it's going to be the Blue Jays and the Yankees and the Rays throwing haymakers to win, you know, 88 to 92 to 93 games, something like that. So exactly. Yeah. So question like that uh, yeah. is what we're looking for. Like, and again, we're not looking for rocket science questions. Like we're just looking for fun questions that yeah. you might think that would maybe be good. Look, yeah. if you've, if you've watched this show enough, if you listen to the show enough, you've, you've seen mailbag episodes. So what we want is just voice memos for mailbag episodes that we could use that could get you on the show and uh, we just highlight the Locked On Race community. Every t- every chance that we get to highlight the Locked On Race community, we will always take that route. And this is just another way that we can do that. Yeah. A uh, couple other things. I'm glad you mentioned that. If A lot to ask here. But if you could make it sort of uh, an evergreen topic, you know, not necessarily who's going to make the opening day roster, but some questions that we can plug and play and... Um, Yes. And, uh, discuss uh, throughout right. the first couple of weeks of the season. That would be good. And, you know, maybe it's just a general baseball question, maybe not necessarily raise related. Or if you have a life question or a living in Tampa Bay question, we'll we'll accept some of those as well. You I know, think. so we need 10. So you're competing last time. We had 16 people in the league, but we had like 24 entrants. So we had to say no to a few people. That's probably going to happen again. So yeah. make sure that your voice memo has all of these bullet points. And just like Kevin said, if you make it evergreen, you're making it into the fantasy league. Yeah. So, um, yeah, that's about it. But I'm going to try to be honest this year. No payola. Um, I can't be bought. I can't be paid off. Well, actually, for a price. I mean, if you DM me and say, hey, I'll give you $10,000 to be in the fantasy league, then all bets are off. I'll, I'll, every 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 human has their prize, don't they? Yeah. yeah. I'll uh, I'll chat GPT the voice memo for you. But um in all seriousness, um locked on raise at gmail.com. Voice memo has to be a voice memo 60 seconds or fewer. Uh who you are, where you're from, uh bonus points if it's an evergreen baseball or life topic and uh the draft uh, we'll have to be this Sunday, I guess, unless we want to, it's got to be sooner than later. So that's Sunday, yeah, Sunday, 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 Sunday is, uh, what we'll roll with here. Still yeah. haven't figured out the time, but, um, you know, make yourself available on Sunday in between watching college basketball. That's all we exactly. can pretty much yeah. tell you there. All right. Uh, in the meantime, hope you all have a wonderful day. Stay safe. And we will talk to you on Thursday. Thursday.